Hi, I don't know if I'm live. Uh, this is only the second time I've ever done this. So um, hopefully everybody can see me. No idea. I'm gonna try this. Um, it is 4.30 and I am drinking a little bit of Fireball to get this started. Um, I wanted to thank Sally Ann for uh, organizing this event. Um, I know she kind of had a rough 24 hours, so um, my heart goes out to her. Um, so what I wanted to read today is uh, I wrote a book in um, third person, and it's called Lucky, and here's what it looks like. This is an actual copy of the book. It's just a little uh, metal art thing I made uh, for when I was doing some book events. Um, anyway, it's a story about a woman who wins the lottery, and she's not um, she's not a very wealthy person at all. And so, winning this, of course, like anybody, winning the lottery would change your life. So I'm going to start, um, and I'm not going to be nearly as good as uh, Susie was amazing. Uh, Jean earlier today was amazing. So um, yeah, so here we go. Chapter one. Just this hot dog, and can I get a lottery ticket? Serena Evans made a different choice that day. Digging through her purse, she managed to scrape up $4.18. With a $2 hot dog in hand, she could have used that last $2 on a large Diet Coke with extra ice, her go-to every time. But something inside her made her ask Dougie, the quick, stop <laughs> the quick stop cashier, for a lottery ticket instead. The jackpot was 42 million, almost double the highest it had ever been in Colorado. People in town were talking about it and dreaming about the what ifs they won. Sarita never played the lottery or gambled at all. Maybe it was the fear of missing out that made her buy one or just the idea of having everything she ever wanted for the first time in her life. Good luck, Dougie handed her the ticket. She mumbled thank you and slipped the smooth piece of lime green paper in the back pocket without even looking at the numbers. It was a decision she instantly regretted. That Diet Coke would have been a real treat considering the hot dog wasn't nutritious or even delicious. The only good thing about getting a quick stop hot dog was all the extras she could add. A thick line of ketchup paralleled a thicker line of mustard. She applied a generous amount of relish and nacho cheese under the scrutiny of Dougie, avoiding eye contact with him. She didn't want to have to defend herself, but she was hungry and it was there for the taking. This meal would have to carry her over until morning when her deposit showed up in her account and she could afford a trip to the grocery store. Serena lived paycheck to paycheck and budgeted every penny she earned at the hooked bookworm. She scraped by using two for one coupons and took advantage of supermarket sales on chicken and beef every Tuesday. Even though a huge portion of her salary went to a tiny studio apartment above an antique store, Serena couldn't imagine living anywhere else. Late spring in Vail, Colorado was beautiful. Even though there was still snow on the ground, the sun was bright and warm and the crisp air was refreshing. Nothing beat the smell of fir trees and mountain air. Serena took a deep breath and two seconds to appreciate her surroundings, then quickened her step. The bookstore was four blocks away and she had spent over half her lunch break walking to the gas station to pick up her cheap lunch. She kept the flimsy cardboard boat that housed the messy hot dog with both hands and crossed in front of traffic, nodding apologetically at the drivers. She needed a few minutes to sit down and eat this before her lunch break was over. You have five minutes, Mrs. Brody, busy with a customer, said over her shoulder when Serena slipped into the store. Her smile had a bite that Serena didn't appreciate, but she tolerated it because she needed this job. She rolled, she rolled her eyes and closed the door to the 10 by 10 break room in the back of the store. It was windowless with faded yellow walls stained gray from old cigarette smoke and a wallpaper border that bowed out as if it too wanted to escape the dismal space. The long fluorescent bulbs hummed above her and flickered when she used the microwave. The room was a prison and she was sure it violated several safety codes. Mrs. Brody put so much love and care into the store, but was a complete slob behind closed doors. Serena had offered to paint the break room and hang pictures for her, but Mrs. Brody told her it would have to come out of her paycheck and to be done after hours. As much as she loved what she did for a living, Serena wasn't that invested in her job. It afforded her the luxury of reading for free, but she had to be careful not to bend the spine or crinkle the pages or that too would come out of her paycheck. She wolfed down her lunch, but refrained from licking the cheese that settled and hardened at the bottom of the disposable dish. Even though she was still the only one in the break room, she was technically still in public. 
Serena wouldn't put it past Mrs. Brody to have hidden cameras in the vents or in the smoke detector. She washed her hands and hit the floor with 38 seconds to spare. She was good at budgeting not only every penny, but also her time. We have to move books around for today's shipment. The new Stephen King book is out tomorrow, and we want that front and center in the window, Mrs. Brody said. Serena knew that meant her. The other employee was Hunter, Mrs. Brody's nephew, who sometimes closed the shop with her. He was cool for a teenager, but also lazy. It was better if she got the work done before he came in. Then they could relax and have a good time instead of obsessing about who was supposed to do what for the next day. The books are late this time. Are they for sure getting here today? Serena asked. New books were shipped several days ahead of the release for stores, including the hooked bookworm, to set up a massive promotional display. Eight inches of fresh snow from the weekend had caused traffic delays that had a rippling effect on several town deliveries. It was a matter of waiting and stressing until the truck showed up. John said that he was headed here this way with the shipment. We can expect him by three, she said. That meant overtime for Serena, and she was fine with that. She worked 10 to 6 Monday through Friday and opened on Saturdays. Hunter closed on Saturdays, and Mrs. Brody worked whenever she wanted. Serena waited until Mrs. Brody left for her lunch break before pulling at her phone to text her best friend, Chloe. I feel like I didn't get a weekend. How was the party? I can't believe you didn't show. It was a good time. And no, Amber wasn't there. Serena was forever running into Amber since they broke up over Christmas. Even though she lived across town, she was always in the area. Sometimes she would walk by this bookstore and wave to Serena, who was almost always avoiding eye contact with her. Serena knew that she wasn't the most exciting person, but she had a good heart. And if Amber couldn't see that, then she wasn't worth Serena's time. At least that's what Chloe always told her. I just wasn't feeling it. I'm sorry. Truth was, she didn't have enough money for gas and didn't want to show up empty-handed. She had the ingredients for sugar cookies, but who showed up to a party with cookies? Chloe and her wife would have expected wine or beer or even chips and dip. They never talked about money, but Chloe knew Serena struggled. Nobody knew for you, but it was still fun. The usual suspects were there. Brian brought a new guy who was hot and very outgoing. It sounds like fun. I'll be at the next one, I promise. Chloe had parties every month. She said it was good for morale since there was snow on the ground six months out of the year and people tended to hole up if they weren't skiing. We have too much food left over, so I'm going to swing by tonight and drop some off. What time are you home? We have inventory tonight. Probably not until 7.30 or 8. Ooh, well, if I miss you, check your refrigerator when you get home. Gotta go. Behave. Never. Serena smiled and slipped her phone back into her pocket. They both knew that Serena was the most reliable person out of their small group. The business phone rang. Answering it gave Serena anxiety. Mrs. Brody had an old push-button phone from the 80s with a cord that twisted so badly she had to bend down behind the counter to answer it. She hated not knowing who was on the other line. Phones today were such a luxury with caller identification. This relic didn't have it. Hooked bookworm, how may I help you? Hey, sweetie, it's Mom. I was wondering if you would like to come over for dinner or later in the week. To say her relationship with her mother, with her mother was strained was putting it mildly. Serena resented her mother for so many things, and even though she knew a lot of bad family decisions were because of her mother's disease, it was still hard to forgive and forget. Serena managed to keep the heavy side to herself and eliminated all venom from her voice. Tonight's bad because I have inventory and will be late. How about Wednesday? Paul and I would love to see you again. I'll make spaghetti, your favorite. Can you bring a salad? Panic fluttered in Serena's stomach as she wondered what the real reason for dinner was. Quality family time wasn't high on the list. Neither was just checking in. There was always a reason. Diane was a recovering alcoholic, sober three years now, and Serena was still waiting for the slip up. How many times had her mother tried rehab and failed? Four, five? Serena lost count when she moved out at 18. It wasn't that she didn't love her mom. She just learned that she had to love herself more to move on. As much as she wanted to attend college and go on to University of Colorado School of Veterinary Medicine, one of, her best, one of the best in the country, she stayed in town. Faith, her half-sister, had needed her. She was 10 years younger and completely at the mercy of Diane and her abusive drunken outbursts. Serena hung around to ensure Faith ate every day and got to school. Someone had to make sure she got clean clothes to wear, she had clean clothes to wear, even if they came from a thrift shop and school supplies. College just wasn't in the cards for Karina, for Serena. 
Taking care of her family and working full time made taking classes at the community college impossible. Like every other spark in her life, the desire for continuing education was a flash of hope that just fizzled out. I'll bring a salad and dessert, she said. Even though Serena liked a glass of wine with pasta, no way was she gonna be okay with her mother and a bottle of wine in the same room. She thought about the scene in the book Twilight where Bella cut her arm and Edward fought off his family because Bella's blood was too tempting to them. She visualized her mother with the same crazed intensity as Jasper when he first smelled Bella's blood. You bring the salad. I'll ask Faith to bring dessert. We'll see you around seven. Serena figured her mother called the bookstore because she had to answer the phone. It was her job. Most of the time, she let her mother go straight to voicemail on her cell phone and called her back when the mood struck. She placed the mauve ha handset back in the cradle and did her best to untangle the cord, a meaningless task to keep her mind from flooding with memories she'd rather tamp down. After a moment, she decided to text Faith. I guess we're doing dinner on Wednesday night. Bring banana pudding fluff, please. Serena quickly added the word please to her text so as to not seem still bossy. Even though she had a good relationship with her, the need to offer her guidance, whether she wanted it or not, was strong. What's in it for me? Spending quality time with your favorite sister. You're my only sister, appropriate eye roll inserted. That we know of, open mouth emoji, then a winking one. Okay, banana pudding, the good stuff on it. Thanks. It was dessert semester at Vale Culinary Center and Serena had offered to be Faith's guinea pig anytime she needed a taster. The banana pudding fluff was Serena's weakness. Never mind the chocolate eclairs or vanilla bean souffle. Serena was all about the simple rich things. Knowing Mrs. Brody would question what she did in her absence, she pulled the book. She pulled the books from the window and switched out the pale backdrop to something darker and ominous for King's latest. While she enjoyed a good paranormal thriller like the next person, she couldn't help but wish the bookstore would give this kind of attention to romance writers whose books lasted far beyond a quick story. Their books gave her hope and made her believe in something she hadn't felt in a very long time, love. Love was always the goal, but finding the right woman seemed impossible. She was almost 30 and had never really been in love before. Given her heart, giving her heart to just anyone seemed impractical, but damn it, she wanted it more than anything. That's it. That's my first chapter of my first attempt at third person. Um, Lucky is out um, June 1st, but the good news is the books just shipped um, to me. Uh, I should have them tomorrow, hard copies. So if anybody wants a signed copy of a hardback, or not a hardback, but a, um, an actual book book, uh, just reach out. Um, any questions? Anybody have anything for me? I'm not quite sure how this works. I see that people are watching me. I see Nadine and Sue and Dutch and Kim. And this is kind of fun. I really enjoy this. Um, I know next up is Casey Luck. She's great at this. She does this for like every day. She has like 14 different videos every day. So she's a pro. Um, thank you for, uh, for joining us. I have Molly here beside me. I'm gonna, let's see if we can show her to you. She's sleeping a little bit. Hey, hey, wanna say hi? Wanna say hi? Hi, hi, no? Yeah, she's a little shy. So thank you for coming and uh, thank you to Sally Ann again. I know there's a lot more going on tonight. So um, I guess, um, I guess what? I guess you need to say hi. People want you to say hi. All right, hang on, we're gonna grab Molly. All right, come here, baby girl. Come here, come here, come on. Oh, okay, there's my baby. There's Molly. Say hi, say hi, say hi everybody. She's not real happy. I mean, she should be. I just fed her, but she kind of wanted to nap. So, oh, well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you for embarrassing me. So, um, I guess, um, thank you for your support and uh, have a good night and practice social, safe social distancing. <laughs>